Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today I will be presenting a case of a 57 year old female who presented with uh, complaints of vomiting, loose stools, lethargy since two weeks and uh, she was referred from outside hospital in view of hypotension, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia and low cortisol. On an initial 10 second assessment, patient is uh, conscious but uh, confused and uh, on a primary survey, airways patent, no pulling of secretions or gurgling sounds. Uh, breathing, air entry is bilaterally equal, uh, saturation of 98% with respiratory rate normal, 18 per minute. Circulation, uh, BP is uh, showing as 80, 50 mm. and uh, pulse rate of uh, 110 per minute. We put a uh, 218 gauge IV cannulas and uh, uh, attached to cardiac monitor and the uh, blood samples were collected and we started her on uh, isotonic saline at uh, 30 ml per kg, around 1, 1 to 1.5 liter we had bolused. And uh, then uh, we had also, initially because cortisol was low and they were suspecting uh, additions, uh, we had uh, given a hydrocot, uh, we had already taken samples and given hydrocot 100 mg IV stat. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, then uh, coming to disability, the patient GCS is E4, V4, M6, pupils equal reacting to light, moving all four limbs, exposure, temperature of uh, 97 degree Fahrenheit, GRBS uh, 90, and uh, generalized hyperpigmentation was there. And adjuncts of primary survey, ECG showing sinus tachycardia, uh, VBG pH of uh, 7.34, lactate of 2.2, bicarb of 20, sodium uh, 136, potassium 5.5. And uh, uh, then uh, coming to secondary survey. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll just, we have got a 54 year old lady. So, 54 year old lady had come to the ED with a background history that uh, she has having loose tools, loose tool vomiting, vomiting lethargy. and lethargy since last. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks she has been... But she has been having such intermittent episodes like this. Okay. Previously, uh, previously she was also having these episodes and uh, she is a known case of... Uh, hypothyroidism. 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 Hi known case of hypothyroidism. hypothyroidism. Then anything else she is taking? Nothing. No, only thyronome she is Only thyronome she is taking. Okay. So, she has uh, been on thyronome and uh, coming to the ED and uh, outside the cortisol level was low. Low. And uh, that is the main reason why they have referred. Referred. persistent hypotension, hypotension was also there. Was okay. So, the patient had come, uh, you suspected and what a distance disease or uh, you suspected a primary adrenal insufficiency or a secondary adrenal insufficiency? Uh, that based on uh, further evaluation. ACK okay. So, we thought in terms of an adrenal crisis, we can tell in that way. We, uh, adrenal crisis and we started her on fluid bolus and uh, hyperpigmentation just leave it there. So, uh, like 57 year old uh, coming with this presentation only two weeks. What will be the presentation of Addison's disease and uh, we have to think about that. Just keep that in the background. And uh, the patient had come to the ED and you have uh, treated uh, with IV fluids and uh, you are given hydrocortisone and for which she responded very well. So, what are the other parameters that you said? There was hyperkalemia, there was no hyponatremia as such, uh, hypoglycemia also was not there. Okay. So, this is the history that you got. So, right now we have a patient with a probable adrenal uh, crisis which you have treated, we are not very sure whether it is a primary adrenal insufficiency or it is something like a secondary adrenal insufficiency. So, that is what uh, we have having right now. So, uh, just leave about this case. So, when will you suspect an adrenal crisis for a patient that has come to the ED? When will you suspect? Okay. Yeah, I need to suspect starting, this. Okay. Initially, since we on view of hypotension, uh, we will be starting uh, patient on fluids. And okay. then further we will be starting on WASA process and still the BP is not picking up then we will have So, to you wanted to wait until like uh, you wanted starting in uh, one dose of uh, one single dose of inotrope or a vasopressor. You want to wait to tell that this patient is having a uh, suspected cortisol deficiency. So, what uh, you can do is that whenever usual response when you have this like 50 percentage of the fluid volume has gone in but still there is no improvement of the BP then definitely you are ruling out other causes like a hemorrhagic shock. I am not saying for a hemorrhagic shock. Like this patient, we do not have any clear focus of any infection. So, we are not in suspecting of any other types of shock mm. for that reason. We are not having a probability of a septic shock. We are not thinking in terms of a cardiogenic shock. So, that has to be in the background. So, here you have do not have anything else in your mind. You have started treating a patient for hypotension. 50 percentage fluid bolus you have given. Still, there is no improvement. It should strike whether I am dealing with a cortisol deficiency. I am not saying every patient will have this, but that is the time you should start suspecting. Mm. 
वॉन्ट्स यू स्टार्ट ए वैसो प्रोसेसर इट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज वॉन्ट्स यू स्टार्ट द वैसो प्रोसेसर डेफिनेटली द ब्लड प्रेशर विल गो अप यूशली देन इट कैन बी अ रिफ्रैक्टरी सेप्टिक शॉक ऑल्सो विल हैव सिमिलर प्रेजेंटेशन सो वेंस यू हैव ए पेशेंट विथ हाई पोटेंशियल फिफ्टी परसेंटेज ऑफ द वॉल्यूम यू लाइक यू हैव वॉन्टेड टू गिव लाइक वन पॉइंट टू लीटर्स ऑफ फ्लूड बॉलर्स लाइक सिक्स हंड्रेड एम एल यू गिवन देर इज नो चेंज इन द हार्ट रेट देर इज नो चेंज इन द ब्लड प्रेशर मच देर इज नो मच सिग्निफिकेंट इंप्रूवमेंट दट इज द टाइम यू शुड स्टार्ट सस्पेक्टिंग देन वॉट इज द सेकेंड थिंग दैट यू विल हैव इन योर माइंड ए टिपिकल प्रेजेंटेशन सो दे डोंट हैव लाइक ए क्लासिकल प्रेजेंटेशन दे विल हैव द क्लासिकल वन इज वोमिटिंग लूज टूल्स सो दीज आर द थिंग्स वी थिंग्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ आर वी डीलिंग विद गैस्ट्रो एंड राइट सो दैट विल बी अवर इनिशियल थॉट बट दर इज नो हिस्ट्री सच दैट द पेशेंट हेज गॉन आउट साइड वॉज हैविंग फूड सो दैट हिस्ट्री शुड बी वेरी कैची सो यू आर नॉट गेटिंग एनी अदर मेजर सिम्टम बट दे आर समिंग सम जी ए एबसेट लेथ आर जी दिस आर ऑल द क्लासिकल सिम्टम्स दैट यू नीड टू थिंक इन देन द नेक्स्ट थिंग यू आर लुकिंग इन टू यड गैस एनालिसिस you are looking and there is a hypoglycemia you are getting a patient who is having hypoglycemia hyponatremia ideally hyponatremia and hyperkalemia so that then you can think that okay this patient is having probably you are suspecting an uh, cortisol deficiency maybe primary or secondary the next question that arises in your mind what whether you need to take a random cortisol or whether need to take an atm cortisol see here the spectrum of patient is very important so uh, when you have a patient with sepsis and when you are suspecting a cortisol deficiency you can take a random cortisol that is okay but when you have a because already that rhythm is altered in sepsis but when you have a real patient you are suspecting an adrenal insufficiency you need to do an atm cortisol mm-hmm. but the problem here is that we don't want to wait for that hypotension and till the time you don't we need to treat them with the steroids yeah. so do not delay administering yeah. steroids that's the first thing that i want later on we can do act simulation test and we can found out whether there is what type of adrenal insufficiency all those things but right now whenever we have a suspicion don't think in terms of whether i should do an atm maybe you can take a random cortisol as you have done in this case and uh, you can uh, immediately give the first dose of hydrocortisol yeah. 100 mg of hydrocortisol you can give then Well, how will you proceed with the further doses further doses uh, you, we have to give 50 mg every 6th hourly so that is the mm-hmm. most important thing when you are going to give as a replacement dose of hydrocortisone so here we are not treating for an inflammatory property when you are having a bronchial asthma exacerbation mm-hmm. we are treating it for the inflammatory mm-hmm. property so you need to give only od od dose but when you are planning for an replacement mm-hmm. doses it has to be given over a period of like 6th hourly minimum 6th hourly 8th mm-hmm. hourly sometimes rarely you need to start so uh, you can start like 25 to 50 mg 8th hourly not going beyond like 200 to 300 mg will be the maximum requirement in a day so that is a one category of patient so this then there is another group of patient who is having on chronic steroid so the steroid withdrawal that history if you that history then it's very easy for us mm-hmm. chronically they are taking for bronchial asthma maybe for rheumatoid arthritis they are withdraw taking steroid now we are finding hypotension then they have come with ga upset and all that is an again a uh, link to connect with now again when will be as you said the hyperpigmentation will come to that so where is the presentation for the addison disease what age group they usually come up with what is the uh, age that usually they will come with diagnosing of addison and this is yeah. so, there is like a, a depends if it's in genetic involvement ah. factors involvement then early they, they will early otherwise what is the most common cause of an addison disease that you are saying one cause of, uh, in india it tb in india it is tb when you are going for writing uk exam it is autoimmune, autoimmune. autoimmune. so that is the difference in india it is tb always so the next it is autoimmune, autoimmune. so autoimmune is the one thing that you need to keep in your mind usually it will like the fourth decade or third decade depending upon if there are any stressors much early they will might have presentation much more early also so that is one major difference that you need to remember so our concern in the ed is to just to start on steroid and maybe a random cortisol and later on we can definitely need evaluation with an acta simulation test and all so fluid boluses and all those things now i am giving another scenario uh, we are having a patient who is taking steroid regularly so now she has come with sepsis so she has presented you with sepsis so sh- imagine that she is on uh, rheumatoid arthritis 10 mg per day or uh, whatever be the day she was on steroid or maybe already there was a background history of an adrenal insufficiency before and now she was on steroid or there is a chronic steroid therapy use now she has presented with steroid so what will you do now to hike up the dose so that is again depending upon the why the patient is on steroid for example if the patient was on steroid 
for some other reason maybe for inflammatory property you need not do but if the patient is replacement uh, taking stress then you need to usually you need to double up the dose whatever is depending depend on the stress response so if they are taking for a major surgery yes the stress response is going to be high maybe you need to give significantly dose increment has to be done maybe a minor surgery you don't need it that that's depending upon each condition you have to understand that and you need to give additional doses of steroid so basically chronic steroid usage as such when you are having a patient like 10 mg of steroid regularly they were taking for rheumatoid arthritis their serum cortisol is reasonably okay but there is a possibility that they can have a worsening of hypotension during the surgery if any doses of cortisol has been missed but when they are taking it for replacement doses definitely you need to go upon it so that is the most important uh, thing that you need to do now uh, you had a patient the same patient we had diagnosed so what was the uh, evaluation done for her once you settle the hypotension how did you evaluate her further uh, further we will have to uh, check the electrolytes and mm. uh, the cortisol so level. electrolytes we have said hyponatremia hyperkalemia ah, and hypoglycemia these are the most common issues then then hypercalcemia can also be okay then then uh, cortisol and cortisol level you have to take and mm. uh, that should be uh, in the uh, lower side outside hospital it was lower but here already they I think they haven't started any replacement they have started i think that's why the uh, here it was not normal okay so they started yes. but even if that was not enough she went into hypotension hypotension okay then and uh, then we have to send acth level also mm. it should be uh, either increased or normal it should be either increased or normal okay uh, so if it is increased uh, then we'll have to uh, suspect pri primary adrenal insufficiency okay uh then uh, depending on uh, if it is normal if it is on upper range or lower range we have to further test the patient if it is uh, upper range uh, then we will have to send aldosterone mm. and renin levels uh, if aldosterone is low then it will be primary adrenal insufficiency okay then renin levels will be high in those so what happened to this patient this patient uh, they had uh, sent acth here also acth was normal mm. but outside it was elevated 140 to okay there. so they are suspecting primary adrenal insufficiency further workup was done uh they did a ct abdomen in that uh, adrenal protocol protocol was done there is hypoplastic adrenals okay hypoplastic uh, adrenals then mri brain was also done there uh, only uh, the mri brain it was normal pituitary everything was normal so why the mri was done uh, they were uh, he had, she had a mild uh, uh, like uh, while walking and all she used to say she has mild ataxia ataxia, ataxia and uh, mild one more thing hypothyroidism was there for her why she is having hypothyroidism uh, hypothyroidism was also evaluated ah. uh, they did a uh, thyroglobulin antibody mm. it was high okay so they are so probably are glandular like autoimmune autoimmune disease primarily a pontiomon disease it is not a pan hypopituitarism pituitary looks okay and uh -huh. pituitary all other hormones were okay but only affected glands were thyroid and adrenal uh -huh. so where else you can have uh, adrenal involvement in a patient coming to the ed so i'm just uh, not adrenal insufficiency which all other group of patient that you need to suspect adrenal insufficiency the conditions of okay. when you can have similar presentation they have come for something else but they are having and uh, when you will really suspect an adrenal insufficiency dic they can have bleeding to the adrenals mm -hmm. then hemorrhagic so, snake bite hemotoxic snake bite so, uh, russell's viper is very common adrenal insufficiency mm -hmm. then then it's trauma trauma again mm -hmm. abdominal traumas blunt abdominal trauma so after that they can go into adrenal insufficiency so this is the common uh, reasons that also you need to keep in your mind in the ed maybe you are suspecting an hemo hemotoxic snake bite so the, whenever you discuss snake by the causes of hypotension we will say the first thing being what is the most common cause for hypotension maybe a cardiotoxic snake bite maybe due to the sudden uh, vasovagal attack the patient can have syncope and have an hypotension the next thing once you start administering the asv due to the anaphylaxis later on with the sepsis they can have hypotension but one more thing that is you need to keep in your mind is they can bleed into the adrenals and as a result they can go for adrenal insufficiency so similarly trauma patient patient on dic they can have micro bleeds so sometime we will not be able to see that very clearly they can have micro bleeds and they can go into hypotension requiring steroid replacement sometimes so that also you need to keep in your mind so uh, these are the mo mo major concerns and what how will you uh, start uh, planning the replacement doses of steroid equivalent steroid equivalent suppose you are planning to discharge of this patient you cannot send her with an iv medication mm -hmm. so we'll how will you uh, we will gradually taper and once it becomes less than uh, 40 mg uh, per day into two, two or three divide doses will give 
and uh, then we'll have to start to mount fluoro cortisol also okay so how right. how is the replacement that equivalent steroid equivalence suppose uh, what is the equivalent dose of 20 mg of hydrocortisone 20 mg of hydrocortisone equivalence you should know if you want to give dexamethasone is dexamethasone can be given in this condition Yes, dexamethasone can be given, but uh, there's less mineral corticoid action. Action, but when you want to, you should know the steroid equivalent. So, when you have 20 milligram of uh, hydrocortisone, is equivalent to 5 mg of prednisolone, 4 mg of methylprednisolone, and 0.75 mg of dexamethasone. So, you should know the steroid equivalent. Suppose you want to convert into an oral therapy, the patient totally 200 mg of uh, medication was taken. So, you want to convert into an oral tablet voice loan. So, how much you needed? This is the steroid equivalence 20 mg, 5 mg, 4 mg, 0.75 mg. So, that's you should be able to uh, remember that. Okay, and there is another drug, Defluxacot. I don't remember exactly. There is also a steroid equivalence for Defluxacot also. So, uh, these are the common drugs. When you are planning to uh, convert them to an oral tablet, you should know the steroid equivalences also. So, in a nutshell, what we need to discuss, whichever patient that you think that is an atypical percentage like abdominal pain, loose stools, vomiting, uh, you are not feeling that it's a sepsis related or you are ruling out other causes of hypotension and you started treating hypotension, even after the initial fluid bolus, there is no significant increase and there is an associated or like chronic steroid usage or uh, there is an associated hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, mm -hmm. always think in your mind, are we dealing with an adrenal infection? It's a life-threatening emergency. You need to treat them. So, don't hesitate to give steroids. So, that's a key thing. But what we are doing in sepsis, sepsis is only when we are giving uh, steroid, it's only after refractory septic refractory. shock. So, you have given uh, first dose of your uh, uh, fluids, mm -hmm. then you are given the first uh, vasopressor. Still, the uh, hypotension is not improving in a sepsis, you will give steroid. But when it, you are dealing with a primary adrenal insufficiency or a secondary adrenal insufficiency, you need to think after like 50 percentage of the fluid bolus you have given, no blood pressure improvement, think that there is a positive. I am not telling you to give steroids. Your thought process should think, are we dealing with a cortisol deficiency? Mm -hmm. So, if you have anything that is connecting, like the whatever the other things, you are getting it connected, then go ahead and uh, uh, give uh, steroid replacement. Do a random cortisol. But the patient is otherwise hemodynamically stable. You wanted to evaluate, you can wait for an ATM cortisol. That will be ideal. Okay. Fine. Anything else that you want to add on? Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thanks.